everyone. It's Miss Elaine here at um, in Longmont, Colorado. I am the executive director at the Firehouse Art Center, um, and I'm obviously not at the center right now. I'm at my house, and I got my work overalls on because it is a painting and crafting and sculpting day today. So um, we are going to be making a octopus collage using either cardstock um, coasters, which you can pick up at the firehouse, and they're hanging on the mailbox. Um, in the supply kit comes coasters, and oh, I left my stuff over here. In the supply kit, there are coasters. I've got some sand in a little container, and I put some shells in there as well. And there are googly eyes. So if you come pick up a kit at the firehouse, you don't need to buy any of those supplies. There are two googly eyes per kit and two coasters. Um, a collection of tiny shells. And these aren't like the big shells that you uh, can buy at the store, you know, for like, um, these are just tiny ones, so I am going to see tiny shells. So these will actually stay on your collage with glue. Uh, sometimes the big shells don't stay because uh, they're too heavy. So these tiny ones will. And um, in the kit, there's also sand. So you going to up all your supplies. Uh, there's some things that I didn't give you because you'll need glue. Um, and you'll need flour and salt to make your salt dough. Um, and you'll need coloring utensils to color in your cardstock circle. Now, if the, uh, you didn't pick up the supplies, totally fine. You can use stuff that you have. You can use a piece of paper that's cut into a circle. Um, obviously, you'll have to make the salt dough with the salt, the flour, and the water. Um, you don't need shells. The shells are just for fun. And instead of sand, what you can use is a brown paper bag and you can just rip it up into little pieces and use that for your brown part um, for the bottom of your piece of paper. So instead of having a cardstock circle, you can just make it with paper. The sand, which we're gonna put at the bottom, you can just use brown paper bag and rip it up and then glue that to the bottom. You could draw pictures of shells or use shell stickers. Uh, and then you would color this part blue and then your octopus goes on top. So different things that you can use. Uh, if you got the supplies, you can use the sand and the shells and the googly eyes. If not, um, you can just use whatever materials you have at home. So we are gonna get started. Um, I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is, uh, mix up the salt dough because it does take lukewarm water and by the time um, if we mix it up at the end the water will be cold so this is my cup of um water and i just had the tupperware that i had mixed the stuff in where did it go did it fall uh and then we are going to mix the same amount of salt and flour um, actually one of salt and then two of flour. But hold on a second, I think I just dropped my cup of work. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to mix your salt dough really quickly before I turn the screen down. Okay, so this is one of water and put that in there. So whatever your measurement is, I think this is, um, what does this say? This is four ounces, so it's half a cup. So whatever your measurement of water is, you want the same measurement of salt. So I put one of those containers in there of water. I'm gonna do the same with the salt. And this is gonna be more salt dough than you'll need for this project. But you can always save it and put it away and reuse it 
or you can make a bunch. Which is kind of why I gave you guys two coasters, so you can make two. Okay, so one of salt. And while these are all edible materials, you don't want to eat this dough because it'll taste really bad and super salty. It might make you sick to your stomach, but it's not going to harm you because it is food items, but um, you don't want to eat it. So whatever your measurement that you used for the salt and the water, you're going to double it for the flour. So whereas I only had one cup for one of these little Tupperware cups, which is actually half a cup of um, water and salt, that means I have to do two of the flour. So that is all that's left in that bag. So I'm going to switch over to this bag. And I always do the salt dough projects at my house because it does make a little bit of a mess. And um, usually I film these in the gallery, so I don't want to make a mess in the gallery. Okay, so that was, so now I have flour. I'm gonna mix one in there. And then I have to do another one because I have to do two of flour. So if the ratio is one, of salt to one of water and two of flour. So it's one to one to two. And this usually ends up with a good amount of salt dough so that you can usually finish any project um, that we have planned. Okay, so I put that second cup in there, second one of these, and I'm going to put this to the side and now I remember why I turn the screen down usually before I start mixing because now I have messy hands, but I'm going to dust it off. Um, and then I'm going to turn the screen down and I'm going to show you guys as I mix my salt dough. Okay? So, here we go. And here's my workspace for today. It's kind of messy because um, there's just a lot of stuff going on. So I got some markers, move those over here. This is the glue we're gonna use for the next part of the project. Let's move my eyes and my shells. Okay, see I made a huge mess with the flour, but I can just toss that in the trash when we're done. There we go. Kind of clean workspace, but here is my mixture. So I have one, to one to two. And sometimes I use a spoon, but I really like getting down in there and feeling the mixture with my hands. Now when you mix this, you really wanna just have lukewarm water. You don't wanna have hot water, because if you have hot water and then you go in there with your hands, you can actually burn yourself. So just use uh, lukewarm water. Okay, so Julia and Joshua are asking about the measurements. So whatever measurement you use, it doesn't have to be a cup. Um, it can be a half a cup. So the, the Tupperware that I used was actually a half a cup. Um, you use one of those measurements for flour, or I mean salt, one of the measurements for uh, salt, one of the measurements for water, and then one of the, and two of the measurements for flour. So. Sorry, once again, it's one to one to two. So salt to water to flour. Flour, you have to double what you used for your salt and your water. And as you can tell, this is actually, usually my mixtures are pretty good, but I'm feeling like this is a little bit sticky. So as you can see, it's sticking to my hands and it's making quite a mess. So what I wanna do, and that's a lot about um, making art. A lot of art is problem solving. And right now my problem is my salt dough is too wet. So what can I do to make it less wet? I can add more flour. But I want to make sure that I don't add too much flour. 
So I'm going to add it very slowly. So I'm just going to add a little bit of flour and then I'm going to see if that's enough. Mix it in a little bit more and then I am going to add a little bit more flour if I need it. So this flour that I made, this big huge mess, awesome. Sprinkle that in there. It's almost like I did it on purpose, right? Scoop that right into my hand, put that right in. So I didn't add too much because what's going to happen if I add too much? Then I start mixing it in and then it's too dry. Then I have to add water. Then what if it's too much water? Then it's too wet and I have to add more flour. So all things that you have to think about when you are working with mixtures and you're creating your own materials. Okay, still a little bit too wet. Look how messy that is. I actually don't mind it. I love doing sculpture um, because when I make art, I feel like part of the fun is getting messy. Um, okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour because it's really wet. But I'm going to do it slowly, 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 slowly because I don't want to add a big, huge chunk. Oh, that may have been too much, but let's see. Okay. No, I think that might have been perfect. Okay, so in the theory of the ratio of one to one to two, you could even, if you were just needing like a tiny amount of salt dough, you could even do, um, you know, spoonfuls. So if you really wanted a tiny amount, you could do one tablespoon of hot, of warm water, one tablespoon of salt, and two tablespoons of flour. And that would make you a very small amount of salt dough for you to make a tiny sculpture. Um, which sometimes is a good thing to do because then you won't have all this stuff left over. Okay, so now I have my salt dough. And as you can tell, as I'm mixing it in my hands, it is starting to clean off my hands. And that is usually a good sign that it is the right consistency. When it doesn't leave a huge mess, on your hands, that's a good sign that you got it right. Um, but you don't want it to be crumbly either, so this is pretty good. See, it's already starting to clean off my hands. It's pliable, so that means you can work with it, and it's not looking wrinkly or scaly or too dry. Okay, so I'm going to take this ball, that rest of the stuff I'll, I'll mix up later, um, and I'm just going to put it to the side. Just like that. Now we can take our cardboard coaster, um, or if you're just using a piece of paper, uh, you can cut your piece of paper into a circle. And we are going to design our octopus collage. So that's just me closing up my flower because I don't want to make a big mess. Now, this is not a very big space. So as you can see, there's lots and lots of clay. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is this. Here is my coaster. I am going to draw a circle around it on top of a different surface. So this is just aluminum foil and it wasn't listed as one of the supplies it's really just a surface for you to make your octopus for it that's not this okay so that is my cardboard coaster and in the collage we have the bottom half is sand and shells and the top half is the octopus and the ocean um so i'm actually going to separate it i think i'm going to actually separate it into thirds so the bottom third is going to be where the sand is. So I want you guys to look at your circle or your coaster. Now it's designed to fit a glass on it like this, right? 
so that it protects the surface. So it's, you know, a circle that's bigger than the bottom of a glass. Um, okay, so I want you guys to look at your coaster and kind of estimate like what a third would be. So this is one third, two thirds, and then three thirds. So when three thirds equals one whole. So I'm actually gonna draw on this piece of aluminum foil. So it's actually pretty good to have a piece of paper underneath. So I'm gonna take this. And so there's the top and the bottom. This is one third. That's another third. And then the last one. So it goes one third and two thirds, and then three thirds. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that up closer so you can see it. It's kind of hard to see on the aluminum foil. But one third, two thirds, and three thirds, okay? So this bottom third right here, where it says three thirds, this part right here, we're going to put glue all in that section and we're going to put sand right there. Okay, so glue. You can use a glue stick if you want. I'm using white glue in a bottle. So cover that whole section with glue and once again, as I was saying, if you don't have sand, you can use brown paper cut into tiny little strips um, or ripped into tiny strips and use brown paper from a brown paper bag instead of using sand. So therefore, it is still a collage. Okay, so I'm gonna put some sand in my hand just like this and I'm gonna sprinkle it right there at the bottom. Make sure that you cover all of that glue right at the bottom and any extra you can put back into your container now this is craft sand um, but if you have like a sandbox outside you can use that as well it doesn't have to be clean sand um, okay so I'm closing that back up and I'm gonna bring this guy closer so you guys can see that is the bottom of my coaster now. So I have a sand on the bottom. And now I am going to figure out where I wanna put my shells. And I'm just gonna add some glue. And then you can add your shells. Now when you add your shells, you want to make sure you press down really hard so that it attaches to the bottom of the cardboard um, and not just to the sand because then the sand might flake off and then you'll use, lose your shell. So kind of make sure you press and really get it set and glued to your coaster. And see, look at that shell, it's really cool. I'm gonna put that one right here, okay. So I'm going to move it closer and that is what mine looks like. So you'll see I used a lot of glue. Why not, right? You want it to stay. You can just use a little bit of glue, um, you know, kind of around the shell so that it will hopefully stay on. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to pick whatever coloring utensil you wanted. I didn't specify on the supplies, so you could use paint, you can use, um, markers, however you want to do it. So watercolor would actually work really well too, but right now I'm just going to use marker. And I'm going to color it in. Okay. 
And this is going to be the background for my octopus. Now there are two ways you can do your octopus. If you want, you can just make him on top of this cardboard and then put him out to dry and the whole thing can dry all at once. Or you can make him on the aluminum foil, then take the aluminum foil to your oven and bake it for an hour at 250 degrees. And then later you can paint your octopus, um, but it's totally up to you. So here is what my little collage looks like so far. Okay, so I'm actually gonna bake my octopus, but I wanna make sure that I know the size that I need him to be. So that's why I drew the circle. So I know not to make the octopus hang off of the edge. It turns out that we made way too much salt dough, but the weekend is coming, so you can use your extra salt dough to make different projects. Or if you have a Tupperware like this, you can put it in Tupperware and then put the cover on it and save it for another time. Okay, so I'm going to, you know what? I think I'm gonna actually make it on this so you guys can see better. So I'm gonna put my octopus, I created a little ball and I think I'm gonna pinch some more off so it's smaller. So create a circle, a ball, a sphere in your hands by rolling your salt dough. You can then take your salt dough and press it onto your circle like that. Now, that is the head of my octopus. Now I need to make his legs. And since it is an octopus, we know that it has eight legs. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch some clay off and you are going to roll it in your hands and you're gonna create long snakes, okay? Now, remember, you don't want it to reach over the edge of your circle. So if this one's really long, I can separate this and I can make this into one leg. And this is another leg. Now I need to make how many more? So I've already made two and I need to make eight. So eight minus two is six. So I need to make six more. So I'm gonna roll the legs like this and make them into long skinny snakes and figure out what I want to do for my leg. So here's another one. And, but that one's really long. I'm gonna make that smaller. There we go. And you wanna make sure that you kind of press each leg into the body of your octopus so you know that it fully attaches. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. So I need four more. So eight minus four equals four. Okay, so here's another leg. Make sure it's nice and skinny. Attach that one. Just like that. Okay, a little bit closer so you guys can start to see my octopus is forming. So I have one, two, three, four, five. This is gonna be six. Press that in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I just need two more. I'm kind of running out of space, so I need to make sure they're really skinny. Seven. Eight. 
And last one. Sneak this one right in here. And that is eight legs for my octopus. Just like that. Now, I'm going to find my two eyeballs. And I am going to press them into my octopus. Now, if your octopus dries and then your eyeballs fall out, it's okay. Just find them and glue them in. <laughs> and then I can use the pencil or the back end of a um, paintbrush to make a face. And that is my octopus collage. So now I can actually take this and leave it out in the sun. Since it's the summer, it does get hot enough where it will dry out and it should be fine to paint. So I can wait until it dries. So leave this out. This will dry. The glue that's holding the shells in will dry. And if you've painted it with paint instead of marker, the paint will dry as well. So then after this guy's dry, I can um, paint him all sorts of colors. I think I might paint him pink. Um, I think a pink octopus would be cute. Now, I know that I had said you can use Cheerios for the suckers. Um, and if you happen to have Cheerios, which I do, you can And it also depends on if your octopus is big enough. So you can stick these guys onto his legs as the suckers. Like that. But that's totally your choice. But I'll show you what that looks like. Ta-da! That is an octopus with Cheerio suckers. He's got his googly eyes. I made him smiley. He's made out of salt dough. And he's sitting on a cardstock coaster where I have collaged sand and shells. So, and that is our messy class for today. I'm gonna take some of this clay. I'm gonna mix all of this stuff in. And I am gonna put it away for other projects in the future. So just like that, and the lid goes on top. So if you have extras, you can do that as well. You don't have to use all of your salt dough at once. You do want to use it though in the next two weeks, just so it doesn't get gross and moldy, um, but you can play with it um, for the next two weeks. So I'm gonna turn the screen up. I'm gonna share some stuff that's going on at the firehouse, because there's always a lot of stuff going on, but even more so. Um, so, hi guys, see, look at my super messy hands. Today was a good day. Um, but the Firehouse and Art Walk, um, which is now part of the Firehouse, is partnering with Longmont Downtown Development Association in their Bigger Hearts, Stronger Streets initiative. Now, if you've driven through Main Street, you may have noticed in Longmont that there are barriers up and that that traffic has been reduced to one way, um, one way uh, going each way. Uh, so one lane going each way. Uh, but that increases the space for pedestrians to walk. So we are partnering with uh, Downtown Longmont to offer art activities and art activation throughout Saturdays in the summer. 
um, and it is called Art Walk Summer on the Streets. So we're going to have musicians, um, we're going to have socially distanced outdoor art booths, um, and we'll also have art activities and art kits for kids. Now, somebody asked me, and it was a very valid question, how do you have art activities for kids and make them socially distanced? Well, we have art kits that can be available for pickup, um, and they're all pre-packaged. Uh, nobody's sharing any tools. Um, we're working with local Longmont artists to create a coloring book. Our sponsors will be featured in the coloring book as well as the artists that are um, creating it. Um, and the kids can come and pick up their uh, coloring kits at St. Stephen's um, and we're going to post a schedule but it's going to be I believe two or three weekends throughout the summer. So you guys can totally come and pick up some art kits. Uh, if you wanted to complete them there you can. They have socially distanced um, tables that are going to be six feet apart. Um, everyone's going to be wearing masks and um, you know we're asking parents to keep an eye on their kids while they're creating at St. Stephen's and then our helpers will wipe down all the tables once families leave or you can take your kits and you can create at home. Um, we're also going to try and work with participating businesses uh, so that you can drop off your artwork that you create and uh, they can display in their windows for a window um, shopping art gallery for kids, so the stuff that the kids have created. Um, but we're really happy to be partnering with LDDA for this. We really believe that, uh, you know, collaboration and creating community is how our businesses are going to uh, survive and stay resilient. And we really need that um, kind of entrepreneurship and community in Longmont to continue. Um, I just really hope that uh, you know, with all this COVID closures that they can do so. And um, the firehouse is excited to do their part to support them. Um, but yes, so Art Walk Summer on the Streets is happening this summer. Keep an eye out um, on the firehouse Facebook page and we'll have information uh, such as schedules, uh, who are the musicians that will be performing, who are the artists that will be doing live demos or having art booths and selling their stuff. Um, and when we're going to be having our uh, kids art kits out for pickup, um, but lots of stuff happening. Uh, next week is cars and trucks for our art themes, so we'll have projects on that and I will get the lessons out on Sunday with the supply list. Um, but until then, uh, we hope to see you um, actually tomorrow we're having our second Friday live opening uh, gallery opening. Uh, we'll also have a virtual live stream at 6 p.m. Um, and then we'll be making a long monster on Saturday. So from Saturday to one to, from 1 to 4, you can come and paint a section of the long monster. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what it's for. But anyway, um, it's going to be socially distanced, paper mache, creation of the long monster. Um, Saturday from 1 to 4. And I'll be posting more information on Facebook once uh, we take pictures. But stay tuned, follow us on Facebook, um, and we will see you guys Tuesday for another art class. Bye. Thank you.